Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the hotspot node. So again, we're going to jump into Fusion and add a hotspot node. Now the hotspot node is used to generate lens flares. And uh, you can get pretty decent ones, but uh, by no means are you going to be able to recreate, say, like a, like a lens flare or something like that. But uh, it's enough to uh, get you a good hotspot going. So let's see what we're doing here and see what we get. So right off the bat, you've got uh, in the display, you can move your hotspot around and place it where you want to place it. You can change the size of your hotspot and you can rotate it. Now, the rotation isn't going to take effect until you change this aspect. So if we change the aspect, either horizontally or vertically, and we rotate it, you can rotate your hotspot. Now up here in the uh, inspector tab, You've got your center, and all this is keyframeable. You've got your primary strength, so how strong your hotspot is. You've got your size, you can resize it right here as well. And as I said before, you've got your aspect, the angle of your aspect. Now you've got a secondary strength, so if you start bringing this up, you can see our secondary uh, hotspot showing up. And again, this is dependent on the location of your primary hotspot. It's all going to change. So you can change your strength and you can change the size. Let's bring that down. And under your apply modes, you have add burn which basically uh, creates a brighter image or a brighter area of your actual hotspot. You've got subtract dodge and it causes your, uh, your hotspot to dim the area. You've got multiply, which makes your uh, hotspot kind of isolate that area and uh, darkens the rest. So we're gonna leave this on add and burn. And I'm going to skip this occlude right now. And we're going to go to the color tab. Now under your color tab, you have uh, two modes. Well, you've got three, but dissolve color is kind of outdated and just there for legacy. You can either have it on no animation or animate it if you need to animate your, uh, your color curves here. And you can change up your color curves right here. at that so if you want to change individual colors we'll go ahead and change our blue and bring that up just a little bit you can change your individual colors under your radio tab you can add uh, radio splines to your uh, flare so if I select this on and again we have no animation animated or interpolate values interpolate values is again an outdated kind of legacy thing so you want to use no animation or animated so you can animate all this stuff we'll leave it on no animation and you can change your uh, radio density and length right here and in order to kind of see what's going on we'll change this radio repeat so you can see what's happening as we change this it's giving us these radio flares and you can change your angle and your length angle. And then to smooth it out, you'll want to use these curves in here. So it's not so uh, rough, but we're gonna go ahead and turn these off. And then up here, we've got L1, L2 and L3, which uh, are for your lens reflect tabs. So. We've got three lens reflection options. So we'll go to lens one and each one of these actually does something different. So whether you 
select one here or two or three, it's gonna do something different, but you've got three tabs to be able to add or remove these. So we'll just do one each so you can see what's happening. So these are adding additional lens reflections and you can change your strength, your size, your position. And again, these are all based on your actual lens flare position. And you can change the element type. So you can pick exactly what you want your lens flare to look like. And if you have an end gun selected, you can change your angle. You can change how many sides there are. And you can change the starriness of your sides as well as your color. So let's pick something we kind of want here. And I'm going to bring these down and we'll change our color to kind of match our scene here. And we'll bring them down a little more. So now we've got one additional element of our lens flare. And down here, you've got uh, individual red, green, blue, and alpha channels. So we'll go to L2 and you can see it just added two more. And we're going to change this color. And we'll change our strength. We'll change our position a little bit. And let's go to L3. And we're gonna leave that just as it is, but we're gonna change our position a little. To kind of overlap those. And change our strength way down. So that is our lens flare look that we created. Now, before we get into this next part, I'm going to go ahead and add some keyframes in here so we can keyframe the location of our light. Close enough. Now, I mentioned this occlude. So you can actually occlude this lens flare just like it would happen in the real world. So in order to do that, you've got uh, the choice of alpha, red, green, or blue channels you use for occlusion. And we're gonna use alpha. But before we do that, we need an actual alpha. So we can bring in our trusty bitmap. Put our footage and let's use luminance. We'll invert it and we'll dial something in. On this hotspot node, you'll notice you have a mask input, which is blue, and you have an occlude input, which is green. So if we input this into the green and turn on our occlude to our alpha, you'll notice once that light goes behind, it disappears. So it's using that alpha to actually occlude hotspot. Now you've also got, I'm going to uh, actually, let me pin this so I can hide that stuff. Under your clue, you have a uh, different modes of lens aberration. So normal is just going to be a normal occlusion. It's not going to change location. It's just going to occlude once it hits that alpha. 
for out and in, it's going to kind of elongate your hot spot into a flare. So if it's set to in, it's gonna stretch the hot spot towards the center. If it's set to out, it's gonna stretch it towards the ends. So maybe we can see the difference here. And uh, let me find where it's just barely going in. And you can see the out, I mean, setting it in moves it inwards and out will make it move outwards. And normal is in the middle. For the flare out and flare in, it kind of adds a lens distortion effect. So basically the flare in causes the effect to become stronger the closer it gets to the middle of your image. And flare out makes it increase the further away from the middle it gets. So it's kind of hard to explain. So the closer the flare gets inside, it's gonna get brighter if you have it on in. If you had to set it out, the closer it gets to the outside, it's going to get brighter. But since we're really not changing, you're not going to see much of a difference. You can see flare out, flare in is very bright because we're close to the center as opposed to the normal. And then the lens just kind of emulates a, uh, a ring, like a lens ring around. And unfortunately, you really can't change the color independently of your lens flare color. And then uh, this aberration right here changes kind of how that looks. So we're going to set this on normal. So there we go. We created an additional lens flare on this footage using the hotspot node infusion. And I will see you in the next node breakdown.